David Allen's Getting Things Done, or GTD methodology, introduces the concept of context. In a nutshell, contexts define conditions that must be present in order to perform a given action. For example, in order to make a phone call, you would need to have a phone at your disposal. And in order to research something on Google, you would need an internet connection. By assigning context to actions, you can easily see the actions that are most relevant. For example, if you're heading out to run some errands, you're probably most interested in actions that involve running errands. And if you're getting ready to board a plane and will be asked to turn off your phone shortly, you might be interested in seeing a list of phone calls. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of creating and assigning context in OmniFocus for Mac at a basic level. We'll cover this topic in much more depth in other articles and videos on Learn OmniFocus. If you click on the Context tab in OmniFocus, you'll see a list of all of the contexts that have been defined. There are four contexts that are predefined when you install OmniFocus for the first time. There's one called Mac that designates actions that you need to do on your Mac. It contains two subcontexts that allow you to get even more specific. OmniFocus would be assigned to actions that are done in the Mac version of OmniFocus. And online can be used for actions that require that you have access to your Mac and a connection to the internet. Finally, waiting is a context you can give to actions to indicate that this is something you're waiting for. Notice that waiting has a pause symbol beside it. If I click on waiting, I'll see in the inspector that the status of this context is on hold, meaning that actions assigned to this context will never be available. We'll look at how this is useful in a moment. You can create a new context by clicking the plus button, the bottom of the column, and then typing the name of the context. Let's create one called errands. And we'll assign this to any errands we need to run. If there are places that you frequently run errands, then it might be handy to have a subcontext specific to these places. For example, I'll create a context called Canadian Tire. That's a retailer here in Canada. And I'll make it a subcontext of errands by dragging it on top of errands. And I could create another subcontext by selecting one of the existing subcontexts and pressing the return or enter key. Let's create one for bank. And if I want to change the order of these subcontexts, I can simply drag and drop to the position where I want it to appear. Similarly, I can reorder any of the main contexts. So if I want to move errands higher up on the list, I can just select errands and then drag and drop. I'll position it right above the Mac context. If I click on no context, I'll see all of the actions in my OmniFocus database that don't currently have a context assigned. In general, I recommend adding a context to all of your actions just to make sure nothing slips through the cracks. I could go ahead and add the context here, but instead let's switch over to the projects tab and add them when we're looking at a list of projects. There are a couple of ways in which you can assign a context to an action. For this first example, I'll select submit vacation request and I'll enter the context into the, the context field. I can do this either by typing the name of the context or by clicking on the pop-up menu and choosing the specific context. Let's say in this case, this is something that we do on our Macs while we're online. So I'm going to choose Mac online. Then I'll go down to the next one, which is to confirm the vacation request has been approved. And let's assume that this is something that we can check online as well. So I could add the online context in line, or I could go into the inspector and again, either choose this from the context list, or if I just start typing the word online, you'll see that OmniFocus automatically finds that context and then I'll press return to apply it. And next I'll select book flight. And again, I'll make that uh, online by typing into the inspector. And this next one here is to call Tim for restaurant recommendations. And this is something I might want to assign a context of phone, but the thing is that we don't actually have a phone context yet. So I could go back to the context tab and create it, but an even faster way to do this is to type the word phone, the new context we want to create. And you'll notice in the little prompt that it's got a command return uh, symbol that appears. So if I were just to press return at this point, it's just going to ignore it. It says there is there is no such context as phone. But if I press command return, it's actually going to create a new context called phone. Now for Google top attractions in Vancouver, I'll give that a context of online. And then I'll move down to car maintenance and I can use that new phone context that I just created. This is a phone call. 
and then buy new windshield wipers. This, this would be an errand that I want to run. So I'll, uh, I could give this a context of errands, but if this is something that I'm going to buy, specifically a Canadian tire, I could just type the, the name of that, um, th that specific subcontext. Let's add one more action to the car maintenance single action list. So I'm going to press return and then return again to create a new action. And let's say I just ordered some touch-up paint for my car, and I want to keep track of this order in OmniFocus. I'll create a new action called Canadian Tire Touch-up Paint. And I'll press tab, and I'll give this a context of waiting. The convention I use is to precede the action with who I'm waiting for. So I'm waiting for something from Canadian Tire in this case. And then dash, the second part, is what I'm waiting for. So I'm specifically waiting for the touch-up paint. When I get a call from Canadian Tire to let me know that the touch-up paint has arrived, I would check this waiting item complete, and then create a new task to go and pick up the touch-up paint. Now let's switch back to the Context tab and see how these contexts can be useful in action. Notice, first of all, that the No Context list is now empty. This indicates that I've applied a context to all of my available actions. If I click on Mac, I can see a list of all of the available actions for Mac. And if I click on Phone, I can see all of the available actions with a context of Phone. When I click on Waiting, notice that the list is empty. And this has to do with the current view setting. I can specify which actions to display by clicking on the View button in the toolbar. Currently, this is set to only show available actions. As I mentioned earlier, the waiting context is on hold, so any actions assigned this context will be unavailable by definition. If I did want to see the waiting context items, I could click on Remaining, and this will show both available and unavailable items, as long as they're not complete. So if I click the Disclosure triangle beside Waiting, there's the waiting task that we created earlier, waiting for the touch-up paint. And there's a few more options available through the View button in the toolbar. I can choose to show the first available item per project. I can also choose to show all items, even if they've been completed or dropped. And finally, I can also choose to sort items in project order, or to show items with due dates or flags first. There are many different ways to use contexts. For example, it can be useful to have contexts associated with specific places, such as home and work, and specific people. And often people like to define actions based on their energy levels. Some actions may require a clear and focused mind, whereas others could easily be accomplished in a distracted environment. You'll find articles and videos on Learn OmniFocus that will give you some more ideas on how to use contexts. This is Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.